Now let me start this video by saying two things. First, the number of possible situations that can happen with emergency vehicles is nearly infinite. So in this video, I'll only show a few of the basics. And second, there will be a lot of animations in this video because these are situations that we cannot plan for. So when you see or hear an emergency vehicle behind you that needs to pass, you'll obviously need to get out of the way. But which side you should move to will depend on which lane you are, where the emergency vehicle is coming from, whatever obstacles are close to you, how much traffic there is, and so on. When traffic is moving at a normal speed, emergency vehicles will usually overtake by the left, since it's by that side that we should overtake. But they could be on the right lane if they're turning right at the next intersection, for example. Basically, they'll use the lane that's the most available, or the lane that is closest to where they need to go. So the most important thing here is to look at your mirrors to determine where they are, and possibly also determine where they want to go by looking at the angle of the vehicle, for example. It's important to put your turn signals and do your verifications before pulling to either side, even if everybody around should be anticipating that you'll do so, because they don't necessarily know which side you'll move to. Especially if you're pulling to the right, because that's the side where other road users are, like cyclists, skateboarders, rollerbladers, and so on. If you're on the highway stuck in traffic and you hear an emergency vehicle approaching, you'll probably be tempted to move to the shoulder because it's usually empty. But that's exactly the same reason why they'll often use the shoulder too. So make sure to check your mirrors to know where they are before doing so. If the traffic is moving at a normal speed though, they should be on the left lane. Remember that on the highway, the left lane is only for overtaking, so people shouldn't stay there after overtaking. For that reason, it should be the most available lane at all times. Now the big question. If I have no other option, can I run a red light to let an emergency vehicle pass? And that's a good question. In most places, the law isn't very clear about that. And even if it was, like I said earlier, there are so many possible situations that can happen that you'll just need to use common sense. Of course, it's illegal to run a red light, but it's also illegal to block an emergency vehicle. Yes, there's the risk of a collision if you run a red light, but there's also the risk that the person in the ambulance dies if they don't get to the hospital on time, or a fire rages out of control if the fire trucks don't get there on time, or someone gets killed if the police don't get there on time and so on. And we have to keep in mind that they will probably need to cross more than one red light, so the accumulation of the lost time at all those red lights could result in a dramatic outcome. So I can't recommend you run a red light in an emergency situation like that, You'll have to check that out with your local authorities if it's allowed where you're driving. If it is, your first option should be to turn right. That's the safest option because that's the one that requires you to cross the least amount of lanes. That's why you're allowed to turn right at a red light in a lot of places. Now in most cases, you should be able to turn right. But if you can't do it for some reason, because it's a one-way street for example, the other option would be to just advance as much as needed to get out of the way of the emergency vehicle, move to the side, and let them pass. Now the thing is, if you're in the intersection, you can't stay there, because when the traffic starts moving again, you'll be blocking everybody. So after the emergency vehicle passes, you'd cross, being careful of the traffic coming from the sides of course. Since the emergency vehicle will have its sirens blasting, it's attracting everybody's attention to them, not only yours, and since you're near it, people should see you too and react to the situation accordingly. Now what you cannot do is to follow behind the emergency vehicle and run every red light or stop behind it. Here's something I saw once, and I swear I'm not making this up. This guy is waiting at the red light at an intersection, and there's an ambulance behind him. So he advances to let it pass, and he stops at about this position. So after the ambulance passes, the guy, like the good law-abiding citizen that he is, absolutely wants to respect the red light, so he puts in reverse and comes back to wait behind the stop line until the light turns green. That is bordering on insanity. In a situation like this, he should have just continued straight and freed the intersection while he was still close enough to the ambulance so that the other vehicles could see him. And even if you're crossing a green light and you have an emergency vehicle behind you, 
you should get out of the way and let them pass to let them go at whatever speed they want to go. Now, something to keep in mind is that in the event of an emergency, most of the time there will be multiple emergency vehicles going there, either of the same kind or of different kinds. For example, if there's a car crash, firemen might need to go there to help get people out of their vehicles. And anyway, firemen are the first responders, so they almost always go to emergency scenes. An ambulance will be needed if there are injuries, and the police might also go there to deal with illegal stuff, block the street, signaling, and so on. If there's a fire, there's almost always several fire trucks going there. So for that reason, be careful before crossing an intersection if you see one emergency vehicle, because there could be others following. If it continues on the street perpendicular to you, check especially to the side they came from. Like here, the emergency scene is on the left, so all emergency vehicles should be coming from the right. But if they turn into the same street you are on, pay attention to both sides, because in that case, there could also be other fire trucks coming from another fire station from the other side, or other types of emergency vehicles coming from any side. And of course, in a situation like this one, they could also be coming from behind. And talking about fire stations, you might have noticed these markings on the asphalt in front of some of them. They indicate that you shouldn't stop on them, like when waiting at a red light for example, so that this space is always free in case trucks need to exit in an emergency. If you're about to cross an intersection and you see an emergency vehicle coming towards you in the opposite direction that is also getting close to the intersection, make sure that you know where it wants to go before crossing. Now you'll say, yes, but shouldn't they put the turn signals if they want to turn? The thing is, even if they do, with all those lights flashing plus the stress of the situation, you most likely won't notice the turn signals. So in a situation like that, just slow down gradually, wait to see where they'll go, then proceed when it's safe to do so. And that's especially true if the vehicle is approaching the intersection in the lane closest to you. And remember not to block intersections, for many reasons, and one of them is that if there's an emergency vehicle that wants to cross, they need to be able to do it. In the next video, how to react to the sounds of emergency vehicles, plus some interesting facts about those sounds, and the move over law. So stay tuned and see you soon. 14,